there's not enough uh, feeling and emotion in in what Jock says or something, you know. That's true. There's, there's, there isn't. But if you are emotionally attached to something, it means you're subjective. There are people that nail a piece of wood together and that, then they kiss it. Before that, they don't kiss it. Till you nail it so it looks like a cross, then you kiss it. You know what I mean? So, what was the day before it was a cross? Two pieces of wood or some copper that wasn't cast in the form of a cross. And the cross is a crucifix, which was long before people wore it, it was to crucify people. So it's a symbolic, depending on what culture you come from. I, that's why I can't accept anything except the sciences, the shape of an airplane wing is designed for a certain lift, the shape of the plane is designed for certain conditions. So you can't, when I say you can't exceed your environment, that means you can't exceed what you've been exposed to. You can't if somebody gave you a brand new microscope and you said the objective lenses are insufficient. If you're a cannibal, do you know what I mean? If you give a cannibal a watch, he doesn't look at it and say, the gears are not precise, they're one thousand, ten thousand of an inch off. He can't say that. That's what I mean by a person can't exceed their environment. If you got in an airplane, if you were able to, you know, two thousand years from now, a guy might look at our plane and say, I'll never get into that crate. Our airplanes would come, come through as a crate or something else. But certainly, if you're born 2,000 years from now, you couldn't have the same values and survive. The nation that can't exceed its own environment will be surpassed. Do you know what that means? Another country will surpass us. If China can't get past where they're at, if they stop and just take in manufacturing and don't go into automation and modification, they will remain. There are many nations out there that are so primitive, <clears throat> they do things the way they did a thousand years ago. <clears throat> and that's up the Amazon River. The natives build rafts the same way they did a thousand years ago. No change. They bond, bundle reed together, tie it all together, because that's all they ever see. They never leave the area. So, if you say they're stupid, no, they're not. They live in a fixed environment where things are fairly uniform and not enough change. They don't have visitors from other tribes that bring them other things. If they otherwise. They might be brought up to hate other tribes, or they might be brought up to trade. The nations that trade undergo change, because they meet people that are different, and they get things that are different. No nation all develop a vase. If a nation develops a vase, and your nation didn't, and they show you how they carry water or orange juice around, and you don't have any means of doing it except this way. So you undergo change. The more nations that meet and share ideas, not just meet, if they share ideas, they undergo modification. But if my people undergo too much modification, I can't control them. So I put a fence around my country and keep out foreign ideologies. Or if the books come into my country that change people so I can't control them, I forbid pornography or whatever it is, I forgive. I forbid. Am I right? Am I wrong? All nations wish to survive. They can't if people read different kinds of books, different kinds of characters, different kinds of social systems. You can't control your people that way. So you say, well, I believe in democracy. Nobody believes in democracy. They believe in what they've been conditioned to believe in. They can't believe in democracy, otherwise they go here, communism, socialism, 
free love and all, they say, I, I don't know enough about to make up my mind as which is right. They'd speak like that. I don't know enough about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm upsetting the apple cart so that there are no values except the values that preserve nature, man, and his relationship to his fellow man and nature. This is the only laws I know of. If we don't take care of the forest, we let them burn and die, we will suffer. If we pollute the oceans, we will suffer. Those are the things I accept. I don't know any other system. Will they do that in the future? I think they'll control things in the future. Weather, hurricanes, earthquakes, everything. Man will learn to control things in his behalf. Not the other organisms that he keeps alive would be supportive to that culture. Do you understand that? That's why it'd be very difficult to deal with people that came from another planet with a different gravitational field, different lighting systems. If they develop, they don't have to look like us. Whatever they develop, they'd be reflecting their culture. So a guy says, I'd like to share ideas with you. Well, only if they lived here and they were had all kinds of methods of evaluation. But they wouldn't want to associate with us. Because we're too limited if they've been around longer. So I can't say that Fresco tells the truth. I can only say that Fresco's world is based upon survey related to man and his relationship to the environment. That's what I mean by mechanistic. Because uh, I asked once a writer of a scientific book, you think man is a machine? That's the old mechanistic point of view, that man is a machine. He didn't say, what do you mean by machine? There was no semantics at the time, you know what I mean? To know what a man is talking about. By machine, I mean that the eyes cannot move to that position unless there's a muscle that pulls it there, unless there's a mechanism in the brain that, or a bright light causes the eye to look at it. So I want to make little dolls. There's a little magnets in there that you don't see. If I hold the magnet there, the eyes will focus on it if I move it, but not really. Normal people will think, gee, the guy, the, the machine is looking at wherever you hold that. I can simulate that. You can make a machine to have facial expressions in sympathy. You say, I bought a new car and I lost it, I forgot to put the brakes on, went off. The machine will, the eyebrows will change. I say, my God, I'm so sorry to hear that, but it won't feel anything. It'll react as though it felt. A machine can't feel bad or good about you. It can only react to the way its circuits are built. Do you understand that? That's why a machine will never say, I'm going to take over. Because it doesn't have ambition. It doesn't say, your wife is prettier than mine, or that machine looks nicer than the other machine. It has no such reaction, nor can it be given that. No matter how you circuit a machine, it can say that that machine is rusting and it's going to disintegrate and it can even cry, but it won't feel anything. It's like a movie of, of an actor doing and you know that he's, he didn't lose his wife and he didn't get shot, although he got shot in the movie. The movie can't feel. He can simulate feel. And that's why a person says, He's a good actor, meaning he can get you to cry or she can get you to cry. So they're good actors. And sometimes people use that in marrying a rich man. A girl might say, you're so wonderful, I love you, and the rich man feels flattered and he marries her. Then she spends all, a lot of money on a lot of things. That's simulating love. You know what I mean? A prostitute that says you're a lousy lay after the day is over, you won't come back. She says, I really enjoyed that sexually. You know? 
after all, there are people that simulate good and bad, right and wrong. Knowing the difference is difficult if they're good at it. A salesman who sells you something simulates being your friend. Let me advise you that the Ford car is better built than any car today. Believe me, I'm doing you a favor. Is he a car salesman or a fireman? You know, what is he? And does, if he's a salesman and a churchgoer and believes in God, they'll say, I say a Chevy is best if you live in rough terrain, or a Jeep would be better than a Chevy. You know what I mean? That's an honest guy. Says, that's what I know about cars. But a person can't work for General Motors and say, get yourself an Italian car. I bought a Tatra, which was a Czech, Czechoslovakian car. You know the Tatra? I bought it, and the mechanic said, I'm not going to work on your car. It's from a communist country. Because he said that to me. I said, is it a communist shit? Or a Greek shit? Or a Greek pain? Or a communist pain? There's no such thing as communist science or Czechoslovakian science. There's only science. And they call people scientists that are general, that are not generalists, that are in one field. He's an optical scientist. He knows how to grind lenses, but he's not a scientist. To me, a scientist, one who's interested in everything, has loyalty to methodology. That means if a Greek comes up with a cure for cancer, you honor him. If a Japanese guy comes up with a cure for cancer, you honor him. You honor any human being worthy of honor, but you don't honor only your own kind. He was an American. That's what I like about it. Patriotism pulls a shield up in front of us so we can't see things as they are. We can't even hear the differences of nations. We get mad at them if they don't uphold American values or our concepts of freedom and democracy. We get mad at people, and that's what they want you to do. They want you to have loyalty to what they teach. But if you have loyalty to methodology, you get rid of a fountain pen if it leaks and you buy a ballpoint pen. Because it, no matter where it was invented, if it works better than the other pen, you use it. If Filipinos come up with a new type of eyeglass that gives you better vision, you use it. You honor them. But you don't, gee, I hope a Greek did it, because I'm Greek. Then you blind yourself. Do you understand? I don't like traditional Jews, or traditional Catholics, or traditional Americans. You understand? Or any traditional group. But not because they're Filipinos, because of their values. And the values they pick up. So if you discriminate, uh, I don't want to live next door to a Klansman because he lets go out and beat up a Jew or a nigger or a Filipino or any damn foreigner. I don't find that fulfilling. I find that to be limited viewpoint. Racial prejudice is like patriotism toward a certain race. I'm a Greek and I'm proud of it. Once you do that, you damage a person. Say, I'm a Greek and I like certain Greeks and certain Filipinos and certain blacks and certain Italians. If you meet Italian gangsters, you say Italians are gangsters, that's when you're projecting one set of values into all Italians. Anyway, that ought to give you some perspective of the world you live in.